In a previous video, I have showed you how to drive single color dot matrix display using ESP8266. If you haven't seen it yet, feel free to check that out. Link to that video is in the cards and in the video description. In that video, I made a custom PCB for the display, which can control both the single color and RGB displays. So in this video we are going to look at how to do that. Let's get started. This is a RGB LED matrix display. It has a resolution of 32 by 16 pixels. This is the ESP8266 based matrix display controller board. It goes directly into the FRC connector at the back of the display, like this. Then, I insert the power cable that comes with the display and connect it with the power terminal of the controller board. Next, I put the 16-pin ribbon cable from the output terminal of the controller board to the second FRC connector of the display. Make sure you followed the arrows while wiring. Finally, I connected the power supply and the wiring part is done. Let's jump into the programming. The library we are going to use is this PX Matrix library created by Dominic Bixtaller. You need to install this library in your Arduino IDA in order to run the matrix. After installation, open the pixel time file from the examples. As you can see, here are the default pin definition for ESP32 and ESP8266. We need to make some changes in the code before uploading it. Like here, we need to select our matrix configuration. I will select this one as my display has 32 by 16 pixels. Note that, in some displays the pin C, D or A might be connected to ground. Connecting these pins to ESP board may leads to resetting the board and putting it into boot mode while powering up. Make sure to test that beforehand. Another YouTuber, Brian Locke made a great tutorial on that topic. You can watch that to know more. Then, we have some standard colors. You can make your own color by putting the corresponding R, G and B value. Next, we have an array containing bitmap values of an icon. Could be useful for displaying image and graphics related stuff. Here, in the display.begin function, we need to define the scan pattern for the display. It could be 4, 8, 16 or 32. Minus 4. If you don't know yours and you see gibberish patterns after uploading the code, then by changing it might help. This multiplex pattern is also important. By default, it is set as line. But, if you see distortion in the text, then change this line of code to the other given values. For example, in my case it is zagzig. This line is also useful for connecting multiple displays. And that's pretty much it for configuring the display. Now, let's just upload the code and see what we have. Okay, so here is some steady text, some moving text, and some icons. Now, while searching on the internet, I found this morphing digit, made by Hari Viguna. The seamless transition effect looks really cool. The code is written for 64 by 32 pixel display. I made some adjustments, so that it can run on my display as well. I have also added the NTP client and time library, to make a digital clock out of it.
That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like, share and subscribe to this channel. Bye.